We all have the power, if we wanted to, to not be poor if we learned how to raise money. Everybody can say, I don't have money, I can't afford it. He says that's why he's poor, he's lazy. So the reason I say only lazy people use their own money is because it takes much more intelligence to raise capital. And so I've never been able, ever since my rich dad, as a little boy, my rich dad forbade me from ever saying, I can't afford it. He says, figure out how you can afford it. How can you do something? Figure out how you can do something. So over my lifetime, most of the projects I, I've started, I've, I've never had any money. I, I like not having money because it forces me to think I get creative, I have to educate myself, I have to talk to rich guys, hey, how'd you do this, how'd you do that, how'd you do that? And what has happened to me, I mean, I just turned 72, I've never needed money. Because if I need money, I figure out how to raise it. It's easy to say I can't afford it. All the poor people say I can't afford it. All the poor people say, well, it's tax the rich. All the poor people are saying, well, give me a free education, free food, free schooling, free manicures, free pedicures. There's laziness. Only lazy people use their own money. And that's what really pissed off a lot of people out there. Go, you calling me lazy? I said, yes, I am. Because you're the same type of person who will say, I can't afford it. I can't do that. That's the problem. It's up here. It's, it's, it's the real estate between this year and that year. I can't do that. Most of my family say, well, you, I can't afford it. My father taught them to say that. My mother taught them to say that. My rich dad should never say that. And, and, and it's really quite simple. You have to find an asset that's worth more than me. You know, if they can't invest in me because that's called slavery. They're gonna, they're gonna buy me, you know? So what I do is, you know, when I started off, I write about it in fake. I started off looking for this one little piece of real estate. I found an excuse, you know, this one bedroom, one bath condominium on the beach in Maui. And I found an excuse for people to give me the money. All I had to do is, I shouldn't, I'd pay them back. So my first deal was an infinite return deal. I had no money in the deal because it was 100% debt. It was an $18,000 condo. You can't touch them for that much anymore but the economy was bad. So I buy this $18,000 condo, the guy wanted 10% down. You know, you don't need higher math. 10% of 18,000 is how much sports fans? $1,800. I could have used my money, I had the money, but that would be too easy. So the biggest mistake, so I was doing very well here. This was 1973, I started buying my first deal, and that was an $18,000 deal. $1,800 down, $25 a month, cash flow. I was infinite. So I got, and then I, I kept doing that. I had a lot of property. And then I decided I'd go here. So my first business was a nylon and Velcro surfer wallet business. And um, it didn't sell. So, you know, everybody knows what those wallets are today. But back then, this was 1974 or 5. Yeah, 75. They didn't know what the wallets were. So we were going broke really fast. Mm -hmm. We bought 100,000 of these wallets from Korea. We shipped it to our warehouse in Long Island and we were borrowing money from our investors. So we raised about $600,000 to get this little goofy wallet business up. So I was in, we were in serious trouble. I owed my father about $200,000. My rich dad was laughing at me. We were going broke so quickly because we couldn't move the wallets, 100,000 of them. They were sitting in this bonded warehouse on Long Island and nobody would buy them from us. So then the good thing about stupidity, there it is, makes you smarter. So I started thinking, we started thinking, I said, what's wrong? And I said, what was happening in the world at that time, all the baby boomers were fat, so they had to start running. So jogging was coming online, you know, and nobody jogged before because, you know, so these guys are all jogging and then we're reading the paper. We're sitting in Honolulu going broke fast. And we're reading the paper, this jogger went to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco 
and was jogging around the park. And what the jogger did was he had no place to put his car key. So what did they do? He puts it on the front tire of his car and goes for a jog around the park. So we're reading this newspaper and voila, when he comes back to his car, the car wasn't there. Oh gosh. <laughs> so the guy says, they stole my car. Oh my goodness. And so the question was on the headline of the newspaper article, what does a jogger do with her key? And so we sat there and said, oh my God, a problem, a problem. So with that, I designed the shoe pocket and you can see this picture right here. It's Playboy magazine, I mean, she's a nice looking young model with nothing on but a shoe pocket. <laughs> but anyway, so we were going broke so fast by then, but when that picture hit Playboy, suddenly we were geniuses. And everybody started throwing their money at us. And all this product, our wallets were selling, our shoe pockets were selling, investors were happy, and the sales went through the roof. So we were extremely successful. So we went from risk, stupid, smarter, successful.